Welcome back to the third video in our new Worship Guitar Mastery series. In this video, we're going to dive deep into one of the most powerful techniques for adding rhythmic movement and some melodic interest to your Worship Guitar parts. And it's all about palm muted riffs. Now, by the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of how to play a cool 16th note palm muted motif and how to incorporate that into your own playing. So grab your guitar and let's dig in. All right, so this was the second part of the track that we composed. And what's happening here is we've got a palm muted 16th note thing going on. It's a motif that we are playing the same thing over and over with some slight variation that follows the chords. So what's going on is I'm playing mostly on the A, D, and G strings. And for G, I'm playing this. And that's simply, if you look at an E chord like this, I'm just playing it over here. So it's from the E shape playing a G chord. And then again, we're not playing all of the notes together like you've seen in the previous video in the series. We break things up. So I went. That was the rhythm that I played, a one E and a. Just outlining my G triad, and in this case starting on the D note. And then I'm using palm muting, lightly resting my palm. on the string in order to give me that muffled sound. If I don't do that, it's going to sound like this. And also if I play all the notes together, it's going to sound bad like this. See, there's not enough definition between the notes. So when I use palm muting, number one, and secondly, when I don't allow the notes to ring into each other, I get more definition. So a one E and a. So I'm not playing. A one E and a. I'm not letting the notes ring into each other. I'm using palm muting. And the way I do that, when I go to my second note, I roll my finger down so that the, the D string is no longer ringing out. If I don't do that, both notes are going to ring together. And I don't want this in this instance. So as soon as I go for that second note, I roll my, my, my finger down like that. So that was the idea there, the, the motif. And now we develop that. When we went to the E minor, if this is a G, this will be E minor. Why is that? Well, the three notes for E minor is E, G, and B. So if you're paying attention, you'll know that there's only one note different between G major and E minor. So G major is obviously G, B, D, and then E minor is E, G, B. So the G and the B, those two notes exist in both the E minor as well as the G major. And if you look at this, if you play G like this, this is E minor, you'll see that uh, it has two common tones together, which is G and B. That's why G and E minor are related, which is why we call E the relative minor of G. Okay, so a little bit of theory there. Now, the only note that changed, instead of going five, 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 four, I'm going seven, five, 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 four. I'm using those three notes for the E minor. And then when we go to the next chord, which is C major, I use the exact same three notes, but then I resolved it. So when I play E, G, and B like this, which is E, G, and B over a C, that gives you C major seven. So for a moment there, I've got C major seven that's causing a little bit of tension over that four chord that I then resolve. So if we look at this from the E minor, 
within the sea on the repeat I, I went five 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 four the first time then five 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 to resolve it so I'll play it for you from the G so as you can see I play C major 7 and then I go to this which again is just a normal C triad with the third in the bass so we have interesting things happening here here we have the G major triad with the fifth in the bass then we have the E minor triad with the root in the bass then we have a C major triad with a third in the bass. So these are all inversions in the way that I can invert those chord tones. Now my fourth and final chord for this progression was in D, and then I kept the same idea going, but I thought to myself, okay, if this was G, E minor, C major seven to C, how can I play D right here? Well, I have this D as an option, as a power chord, but then there's no third. And if you look at the arpeggio for this D, one, three, five, root. Then I played the same idea, but over the one, the three, and the root. So as you can see, my picking is exactly the same. I'm always picking the A string, and then three notes on the D string, and one note on the G. So I've got one note on the A, three on the D, and then one on the G with the right rhythm E minor C major 7 C major D so that is how you develop a motif you find something rhythmically that works in this case it's a 16th note rhythmic pattern with palm muting and then I just change my notes as I need to to cover the chords that's why it's so essential and useful to know your chord voicings so that you don't have to play G, E minor, C, and D. That jumps all over the neck It's quite, and it, it doesn't highlight the movement in the, in the right way. It's just too much all over the place. Whereas if you do something like this, G, E minor, C major 7 to C, and then D. So there's a lot of common tones and quite a bit of voice leading happening here in the same area of the guitar, which is super useful when you want to come up with parts because what's happening is you can stay in one area of the neck, you can develop an idea without having to jump all over. And then when it's time to actually go to other places, then you can move things up and down, kind of like you saw in the first part that we've shown you of this series. But there we go, that is the gist of this part. Let me go ahead and play it for you one more time with the track. As you finish watching this video, don't forget that you can grab the tabs and the tracks and get access to our special interactive videos featuring animated tabs and fretboards. All the videos in this bundle are powered with the sound size technology in our Worship Guitar Skills Academy, and these living sheet music resources will really take your practice routine to the next level and make it way more effective. You'll be able to practice along with my recording using the special hybrid video and music notation player. So all you need to do is press play and then watch as the notes light up and sync up with the video. This will give you a deeper understanding of all the different concepts and techniques covered in this video. It will really help you to craft killer worship guitar parts with ease. So if you're interested in checking out the tab and track bundle for this specific lesson and also supporting our channel, check out the link in the description for more information. <laughs>